Hey guys, John here. Uh, this video is going to be the last uh, tutorial for the fundamentals and today we're going to cover arrays. So um, after this video I'm going to release a, and you'll find it in the next video, I'm going to release a practical video of the fundamentals of programming and it's going to create, it's going to be basically creating real world applications using what we've learned in the past videos. Uh, after this, I'll be moving on to an intermediate series. So let's get started with arrays. So arrays, what, what's an array? An array is a variable that allows you to store multiple values. Okay, so for instance, I'm going to go in here, we're going to create a new C-sharp script. Whoops, not a JavaScript. Don't ever use JavaScript, by the way, it's awful. Um, in case someone asks why I'm against JavaScript, if you use JavaScript, which is known as Unity Script, um, you're restricting yourself to just this engine. So for instance, you can't get a real job or anything like that if you're using Unity Script. It's not a real language. All right, so we have here array example. All right, so an array is a variable that allows you to store multiple um, multiple values inside of one variable. So for instance, say I had, say I was creating a quiz calculator, right? And I need quiz grades. I have three quiz grades. All right, so I would have a variable for three quizzes. So I have public, uh, public int quiz one, and then I would have another variable, public int quiz two, and then public int quiz three. And if I wanted to, I can give them values. I could say one got a 50, uh, one got a 100, and one got 70. All right, now what I did here was these are all the same data type in three different variables. Instead, say I had 20 students, instead of having to write out 20 different variables and take up 20 lines of code here, I can just create an array that's going to store all the quiz grades. So how do we declare an array? Well, there are two ways to declare them. Um, and technically there's three, and the reason why I say technically is because there is a unity way to declare them. And I'll discuss the pros and cons of doing that when I show you. So the first way to declare an array is the way I always recommend doing it. And the way you do that is you give it, a, it's a, still a variable, so you, so you have your public or private reference, and then the data type the array is, and it's going to be an int because it's quiz grades, right? Um, now what you do is you put the square brackets. This symbolizes that it's an array. So I'm going to say int and then the square brackets for an array and then give it a name. So I'm going to go ahead and say quizzes. Alright, now here's how you declare it. You assign it and you use the open closing brackets and what goes inside here are your values. So for instance, quiz 1 was 50 and then the next value, you separate them by a comma, is 100 and then 70. So what I can do here is I'm going to go and delete these variables. So I have an array of quiz grades here. And the first value, which is element 0, is 50. Then you have element 1, which is 100, and element 2, which is 70. All right, and if we save this and go into Unity here, all right, you'll see here that we have a, a drop down here, which signifies it's an array. And the size is 3, and element 0 is 50, element 1 is 100, element 2 is 70. All right. Now, there's another way to declare the arrays. What if I didn't know what their grades were right now, or I want to enter them in a different way? So instead of doing it this way, I could have done this. I can create an array still. I can say here, public int, or say I don't know the values, but I know the size of the array. So I could say public int, and then you have quizzes, equals, and then you use the new keyword, and then the data type of your array. And it should fill it in for you if you have your intelligence on. So. You do new int and then you specify how many quiz grades do I want to enter. Let's say five grades and then you end it with a semicolon. Now what this does is it creates an array that's the size of five. So if I go back to Unity here, you're going to see here that the quizzes hasn't updated yet. <laughs> One second, let me reset the script. Okay, there we go. So I reset it. So we have five cruise grades, and then here's the third way to declare an array. You can actually do the values right here in the inspector. I can put 60, 50, 40, whatever, okay? Now here's the problem with this. I never recommend doing this. For instance, why? when would you ever do this? For instance, if you're creating an RPG game and you have a bunch of items you, and you give them item IDs, you might have 100 items, and it might be really, really convenient to enter them this way. The problem with this 
is how do you export that data? What if you move to a database? You don't have it hard-coded in, it's in Unity. Or better yet, what happens if you're making your game, you don't save your scene, and Unity crashes? Well, guess what? These values are gone, and you have to re-enter all of them. So if you have 100 items, 1,000 items, you're screwed. Now, when you're getting into that many items, it's better to obviously use a different solution, like XML files or a, a database-driven um, inventory system. Now, but if you're not gonna do that, I always recommend declaring your arrays the way I showed you in the first example which is this one here. Now there is another way to do it through script using this method and it's how it's basically grabbing each element. So for instance if I want the first quiz grade I can access the first quiz grade in that array like so. I can say quizzes the array brackets and then you'll see here it says int index. What element in the array do you want? You have five elements so I want the first one which is zero. All right, Numbers start at zero. So I can say quiz zero equals fifty. And that's how you declare it in void start. You have to use void start if you're going to declare it this way. Um, if I put it up here, it won't even give me any uh, intelligence or tooltip because it can't be done. You can't declare an array like that. So if I save this, let's go to Unity here, reset the script. You're going to see here there's a 5 or actually one second. Oh, right, it's in start. So once I run the game, there you go. So element 0 is 50. All right, so that's the way you can uh, declare an array. Um, like I said, guys, I recommend doing it this way. It's much better. Um, an array can be any type of data type. It could be an int, it could be a float, a string, it could be game objects. If I wanted to access element 70 here, that's the third element, all right? So it's the third element. However, um, numbers start at zero. So it's zero, one, two. So if I wanted to print out that element, I would say debug.log, and then quizzes, and then what element do I want to print out? I want to print out that 70. So it's 0, 1, 2. It's the third element, which is 2. All right, numbers start at 0. Always remember that with arrays. So if we go ahead and run that, all right, and there you go. It's going to print out 0. And the reason why is because it's 0 here. It overrid, and I think that's commented out. Oh, it's not. All right, my Unity just didn't update. <laughs> so let me reset the script. Hold on. All right, there we go. So here's the values. I'm going to go ahead and run it. And there you go. So it says 70. All right. So um, like I said, you can do multiple different data types. If I want to do strings, a string array of names, for instance, I could say public string, the array brackets, equals open closing brackets with... Um, a semicolon, and then I separate them by name. So if I want five names or three names, I'm going to go ahead and say John, and then comma, I'll say Julie, comma, and then we'll say Mark. All right, so I have three names in the array, and I'm good. And it looks like I have an error there, and I'm not really sure why. Uh, let's find out. <laughs> oh, never mind. I guess it just wanted me to... Hit save. Okay, let's make sure there's no errors. Oh, there is an error. Oh, okay, it's a parsing error. I don't see what I did wrong. Let me see here. We have quizzes, we have string. Oh, right, okay, so check this out, guys. What I forget here, every variable has three required components with an optional fourth. Every variable needs a name, so we're going to say names. And there we go. All right, and if I wanted to print out these names with the quizzes, it's very, very simple. All I would do is I would say debug.log. I would say names. So I'm going to say uh, names and then the first element. All right, and then I could say on the next one, debug.log, I want to print out the quiz grade that goes with it. So I'm going to say quizzes in the first element, which is zero. And that's going to print out John 50 if I run this. All right, there you go, John and 50. All right, so I hope you guys are pretty f comfortable with how to declare an array and what they're used for. Um, a case that I can think of off the back is for inventory items. Um, you can use an array to store game objects of items that you have. Uh, you can use it for your inventory size. Also, one thing to note about arrays is that arrays are... Um, Arrays are not dynamic, and now what does that mean? That means you can't extend the size. So this is three. The length of this array is three. You have three elements here. You can't decide later on that it wants to be five in your game. You only have three spaces of memory. 
Okay, you predefined three spaces of memory right here. If you decide later on in your game that, hey, I want four spaces, you can't use an array. You have to actually make new memory manually like this and then put a zero there or something or whatever you want that value to be. Uh, in the intermediate series, I'll cover list, and the list will allow you to create a dynamic array, which means you can add memory at runtime and you can remove memory at runtime. You don't rely on the array. Uh, when you declare an array, you're taking up that memory and it's staying there. Um, so there are situations where a list is better than an array. Um, and typically, in my opinion, I would use a list for items versus an array because um, you might not need to have a predefined set of items, like taking up memory that you're not using. But um, that's a that's a yeah, that's something for another day. So uh, if you guys want an assignment on arrays, go ahead and create an array of ages. Go ahead and create an array of names. Um, go ahead and create an array of game objects and print out their names. All right, and if you're not sure how to do that, I will get you started on the array, and you can figure out how to print the name. So you would say public game object, an array of game objects, and then we'll say my objects. And then you can, um, for, for Unity types, you have to do it the inspector way. So that's the only time, really, I guess it's okay to do that. Um, but basically, you're going to say my objects like that, and then go to Unity here. And you can drag to it, you'll see here, my objects. You can drag three objects. So you can go ahead and create three objects, drag them there, and then go ahead and, um, using a for loop, go ahead and print out the names. Um, if you can't solve that exercise, go ahead and watch the practical, which will show you how to use arrays and for loops together with switch statements, if statements, and variables. Alright guys, thanks for watching.